Senior producer Pam James joins us now, not so much for her dancing no. skills, but because she's also helping us cover stories from the life sciences. That's one of the focuses of Kansas City's Big Five initiatives, isn't it? That's right, Randy. Life sciences is a multi-billion dollar industry here with over 240 companies involved in the health of human, animals, and plant health. But it's also an industry that can be a little complex and very intimidating. Take Stowers Institute, for instance, the Emerald City of Kansas City's Life Sciences. It opened in 2000 with a jaw-dropping endowment of $2 billion from the founder of American Century Investment, Jim Stowers, and his wife. Over the last decade, it's attracted some of the world's finest medical researchers. But what exactly are they researching? Well, I want to take you behind the green curtain to see some of the magic behind these wizards of science. When it comes right down to it, the most important thing you need to know about Stowers is that their research is critical to the understanding of diseases like leukemia, Alzheimer's, and birth defects. And what do all of these diseases have in common? So as a molecular biologist, I will tell you it's all molecular mix-up, right? So you could have in a cell within its nucleus, you have the DNA, which encodes for all the information that it requires to make you and I. And there are mutations that happen within this DNA. And the mutations could be within the region that are involved in transcription, or could be mutations within the region that are involved in segregations, or mutations within the region that are involved in machinery, which are called enhancers that bind and regulate gene expression, or could be translocation where the chromosomes break and they realign. All of these molecular mix up one way or another sort of throws a monkey wrench, if you will, into the business of cellular processes, and that causes diseases. And our job as molecular biologists is to find out what are these molecular mix-ups, and then take this information, and hopefully the pharmaceutical industry would be able to develop targeted therapeutics to treat the diseases. So the work that goes on here is not how do we develop a drug, but the work that goes on here is instead how do we understand the very fundamental processes of life that overall will then help to develop an understanding that give researchers all over the world handles into how to intervene therapeutically. So Stowers is not a drug maker, nor do they dream up cures, but their research is instrumental in identifying misregulated genes in childhood leukemia, as in Dr. Shalotifard's lab, or in other labs researching the molecular mix-ups that cause birth defects or Alzheimer's. This critical research is possible because Jim and Virginia Stowers wanted their scientists to be free from normal research constraints. Many, many scientists gradually became paper pushers who had to spend an enormous amount of time raising funds to support their research. What Jim and Virginia decided to do instead, as they founded this institute, was to build it with a very substantial endowment the income from which could then be used to provide continuing research support for, for all of our laboratories. And on top of that, the resources that is put into the core facilities. And what do I mean by that? So when I was in St. Louis, if I wanted to do um, mass spectrometry, which is very important for my science, I had to find a collaborator somewhere. I had to convince them that, you know, what we're doing is exciting, and then we would work together. Whereas at the Stowers Institute, if I want to do something, I think about it and I just walk across the hall and I talk to the person who is the world expert in mass spectrometry or in microscopy or in molecular biology. Few places make it so easy to find an expert just down the hall. The core centers present a tremendous efficiency of time and cost for the researchers. A unique example of this efficiency is a robot designed to curate and clean hundreds of thousands of genetic research subjects called Drosophila melanogaster, or the common fruit fly. One of three in the whole world, the fly transfer robot can work for up to eight and a half hours cleaning and replacing fresh vials for the flies, which are perfect laboratory specimens because they reproduce quickly, they're easy to screen, and they're genetically similar to humans. There's a lot of things in fruit flies that work the same way in humans. We have a lot of similar genes or genes that perform similar functions. So understanding how something works in an organism like a fruit fly or a worm or a mouse or a, a little leech looking thing like a planaria, those are translatable to people. Even though they're not the exact same way, they're very similar. Another benefit, 
For the most part, scientists don't become emotionally attached to these research subjects. Some people do name their flies, which I find a little strange and confusing also, just because there's so many of them. But, yeah. Danny Miller is researching meiotic recombination, or DNA repair, while attending medical school at the University of Kansas. This is just one example of the kinds of collaborations that emerge from here. Dr. Aaron Guest is another example. The assistant professor of pediatrics and hematology and oncology joined forces with Dr. Shalatifard to combat childhood leukemia. I found out about Dr. Ali Shalati's lab, where the lab is studying the, the basic science of MLL gene rearrangements in leukemia. So it's very applicable to infants who have leukemia, and um, Dr. Shalatiford offered me a position here as a doctoral fellow to study this leukemia. My goal is to be able to translate from the patient to the bench, basically taking the patient's samples, their bone marrow and their blood samples, to the processing center here at Stowers Institute where we can study the cells. And our goal is to figure out what is causing their leukemia, why is it so difficult to treat, and ultimately how we can do a better job of treating it. The scientists here also play a role as educators. In 2011, Stowers initiated the Graduate School of the Stowers Institute for Medical Research as a way to educate pre-doctoral students in research-based biology. Undergrads can also get their hands into meaningful science through Stowers' summer scholars program. And postdoctoral students rank Stowers as one of the top places to work. So from training the next generation to getting down to the nitty gritty of our genetic makeup, the scientists here all agree on the fundamental reasons why they work at Stowers. I describe our work as 99% failure and 1% success, and that you look for that 1%. We're working towards making everyone's life better. I think science is one of the most fun things you can do. You know, every, every day is, is a detective story. And what comes out of the Stowers Institute does not only benefit me and my 20 other colleagues who are faculty in here, it benefits the whole world because what we generate in here, we freely make available to everybody on the outside. Randy, something else I learned is that art is quite prevalent at Stowers Institute. Really? Uh, and some of those images that you saw are taken from microscopy. And they're displayed once a year, and uh, people walk through and will judge them. And it's so cool that Stowers is considering creating a calendar with these absolutely beautiful images. I like that. It's not really surprising, if you think about it, that uh, art is so important, because Jim and Virginia Stowers are quite prominent art collectors. And as you walk through the Institute, you can see several of, the, of their pieces up on the wall or up on pedestals. It's really cool. Well, thank you, Pam, for your report.